the official reason given by the Kremlin was that Mr. Lushkov had lost uh, the president's trust. Um, in fact, there are really two things behind this. The first is that Mr. Lushkov had really openly questioned uh, Dmitry Medvedev's authority in a newspaper article, which I think had uh, enraged Mr. Medvedev. Um, he had essentially uh, uh, criticized one of, his main, one of his main policies, and he also called for a, a return of real authority, of real power to Russia. And this really was seen as a call for Vladimir Putin, currently the prime minister, um, but many speculate somebody who wants to become president again. This is really, really seen as a call for him to come back. So Dmitry Medvedev, uh, who obviously is, is currently the president, really found himself in a very difficult position. His, his authority had been openly questioned by Russia's third most powerful politician. And I think he, he just felt compelled to act, really. Now, Andrew, uh, international viewers may be unfamiliar with uh, Yuri Lushkov, but as you say, he's a powerful political figure in his own right. Isn't the Kremlin taking a, a risk here by firing him so publicly? That's right. He, I mean, he certainly is not a household name in the West, although he is in Russia. Um, I think that Mr. Medvedev uh, and the Kremlin here really have no choice. If they did not fire him, I think they would have been seen as very weak and that uh, President Medvedev's authority vis-à-vis -vis Vladimir Putin would have been badly damaged. That said, I think, yes, there is a risk, because the risk is that Mr. Lushkov was so powerful in Russia in domestic politics, but the risk is that this could really upset the balance, this could upset the elites in Russia, and that, in turn, could eventually, I suppose, undermine Mr. Medvedev's uh, own power and the very structure um, that rules Russia right now.